everybody. Rochelle Jones, Lunch and Live at 11.45. And I do actually have like some kind of snacky, not lunch, but I was hungry, forgot to eat already. So, hey, Nicole, thanks for joining. Oh my goodness, so speedy, hi guys. Um, okay, the first thing is, I'm just curious how everyone's doing. Um, what's bubbling up? What have you been noticing? What do you have questions about? How's it been going so far? Um, I know we're a little bit early too. I like to just get on early, let everyone log in and do their things and whatever they're doing. Tuesday, we talked a lot about um, kids and their grief and how, how to be able to maybe spot it and some things to be able to do. What are we seeing? Are we seeing, do we notice any of that stuff? Did we practice it? What have we been putting into practice and noticing or not noticing what's not working? What do we have questions about? Where are we? Uh, it's, it's challenging. It's difficult, right? Oh my gosh. Well, everybody, hello. Thanks. Hi. Thank you for being here. Um, so the group recovery method, it's pretty, it's pretty helpful. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but it's an action plan. It's something that we have to do in the moment. So we can't do anything until we acknowledge a need for it to be done. And then when we acknowledge or find the need, when we become aware of the need of grief existing in our kids or in ourselves, then, um, hi there, thanks for joining over here. Um, when we acknowledge a need or become uh, aware of a need with our kids, with our self, we have to do something with it. It's not enough to just have awareness and just, you know, um, sending it away, you know, meditating it away is not going to work long term. Or just sending it away through prayer it doesn't work long term. We have... Um, we have really specific things that we need to do. So as we're learning these little tips and tricks, I'm curious what you're actually putting into practice and what you're doing with them. So that's my, that's how I want to start today is just ask where you're coming from, if you've been able to notice some things, and if you've tried to put any of the things into practice. Um, the grief recovery method is you're absolutely going to get out what you put in. And if you are putting in bare minimum, expect to get out bare minimum or nothing at all. Um, that's just how it works, right? So um, if you think of me, so I used to be a nurse. I used to be an ICU nurse. I have the right equipment here to extinguish that fire. <laughs> you know, it's so great. So I love to have that fire going. I don't know why. I just think it's so pretty. But then I have a heater going on down here. So it's like this weird, awesome illusion as I have a real fire going. <laughs> it's working it's working don't put it out because i can't feel my fingertips at this moment i need it although if that means you're coming for a visit to america come put out the fire michael please do it's class <laughs> yeah very classy aren't i i'm so when you see where when you see rochelle jones don't you think classy oh my gosh the girl's so classy Nope, as I'm thinking, let me eat some lunch here. Um, okay. Literally, I need to eat lunch. Okay. So, remember before, I've talked about being, I was an ICU nurse, right? In the Air Force, and a surgical ICU nurse in the Air Force. Now, let's just imagine we were part of the code team. Code team means somebody's dying. You know, you see on TV, they're doing chest compressions and they're, pumping air into people's lungs with the bag. We call that an ambu bag. Um, you know, you see on movies where they're sh clear, you know, doing all that stuff. Some of that's kind of true and real. Now imagine if, if you've been through any type of CPR training or whatever, imagine if I just acknowledged that there was a problem and I just, eh, I think I'm just going to do 11 chest compressions right now. I mean, there's a certain amount that's required in a certain period of time. You know, I'm just going to halfway squeeze that air and just halfway squeeze that, uh, inflate their lungs. I'm just going to halfway move blood through their body with the compressions. I'm just going to do a little bit of it. What kind of effect would we have? It wouldn't be too great, right? I'm just going to halfway cook dinner. I don't really feel like cooking this chicken all the way through. 
what's going to happen? We're not going to have the desired effect, are we? We're going to have something happen, but it's not going to be what we were hoping for. And the grief recovery method is very much that way. This is about emotional intelligence, and we don't become um, to the level of intelligence we want just by halfway focusing on it. It's an all-in thing. So when we are at these lives, I hope that you're taking the half the effect, right? Pure class, right, Cheryl? Mm -hmm. As I'm crunching on my, what are these? Snacks of coronavirus, right? So my snacks of coronavirus today, I have some healthy cranberry nut mix. There's no sugar, it's just nuts. Well, there's probably some of the cranberries. Classy. My healthy snack combined with my cheddar cheese pretzel snack. Very well rounded. Okay. Classiness. Half the effect. I'm going to have half the effect <laughs> that I was going for for health, right? The grief recovery method is an all in, it's an action plan, it's an application based result. And if we aren't applying it, we certainly can't get the result that we want. So I'm curious. What did you take? What are you taking from these live sessions? And what are you implementing? What are you what are you putting into practice? What have you noticed? What have you been experimenting with? You know what Rochelle said said that I need to listen. What does that look like? Are you doing it? Um oh my gosh, always can make us giggle. Good, good. Because the grief, you know, acknowledging that we have heavy feelings, sure. That's part of being human, but Grief is the conflict. It means we actually have both. We have happiness and sadness for whatever reason. And society tells us that we're only allowed to focus on the happiness. Well, there's still the conflict happening. We still have sadness, whether we look at it or not. And so uh, we actually have to pay attention to both. We have to look at the sadness so we could sit with it, so we could heal it, so we can do something with it. Just as much as we, we want to look at joy sat or happiness and gratitude, you know, but just having an attitude of gratitude is completely adding to your conflict. You can't trick your, your heart and mind into believing that something's not there when it is, okay? Your heart doesn't lie. Your intuition doesn't lie. I'm implementing, implementing specific times to pause and just be still. Awesome. So, Nicole, I'm wondering, thanks for sharing that, by the way. I'm curious what you're doing in your stillness and in your pauses. What are you doing with that time? So today, um, spe speaking of which, so today is, I keep this right next to me, somewhere nearby, and it's my ongoing, you know, grief implementation work. And um, so I always have some pieces that are started. I won't even take the time to show them to you because, well, for one, that's not going to help anybody. But also, it'd be confusing if you're not familiar with the steps yet. But I keep this nearby, and so I just completed two. Two or three? Well, I already lost track. I think I just completed two relationships right now. I just took about 40 minutes right before, 35 minutes before I got started right here um, and just completed a couple things. So now what I'll need to do next, after I've done the physical work, I need to find a heart with ears, which would be maybe another specialist or a very trusted friend. Um, and, and I have guidance on that, how to find that. And so I just completed a couple relationships uh, to make sure that I'm my, my most healthy and effective self. Um, carrying this stuff is, you know, we're here, we're here in this coronavirus situation, aren't we? Every single one of us is here. And I don't think any one of us is like, yes, yeah, sign me up. I can't wait to have coronavirus. I don't know. Maybe you are. I'm not. Okay. And so one of the ways, uh, that we need to fight this virus if we do in, indeed come into contact with it, we wanna make sure we have a really strong immune, um, immune system, right? We want our immunity to be as high and as effective as it possibly can be. And what we don't realize is that unresolved grief is changing up the chemicals in our body and causing inflammation. So there's a lot of work being out there right now. In fact, I heard some of it today on XM Radio Channel 121, 121. It's just all coronavirus. I listen to it when I move my car from the garage to a different parking spot so the kids can use the garage to play, right? So that's, I get little tiny snippets of this. And I heard today how they were talking about obesity and coronavirus and 
you know, that that's really the trouble is because the in inflammation markers are so much higher in people who are overweight, whatever, Rochelle. Uh, but also unresolved grief is also raising our inflammation markers. In fact, cancer, heart disease, stroke, or diabetes, um, headaches, migraines, nausea, vomiting, any, any GI, anything, um, let's say those um, immune system, those autoimmune diseases like lupus or all the things, right? They are about, uh, let's say, what is it? Rheumatoid arthritis, different things. All of these things are affected by inflammation in our body and unresolved grief is the number one cause of inflammation in our body. So right now we might be trying to keep a healthy immune system by eating well, but we also need to take time to pay attention to our emotional health because that is adding more inflammation or inflammatory responses than we actually realize. We sometimes might realize that we call it stress, but um, it's we stress is just the newer a newer word, a younger word for the word grief. Um, and it doesn't go away, guys. We can't out exercise our grief. We can't uh, out talk our grief. We can't out meditate our grief. We can't pray our grief away. We need to take action. Just like in the beginning when I'm talking about running a code and chest compressions and air, um, you know, fulfilling or uh, give providing air and perfusing, moving blood through the body. We can't shortchange ourselves and just do it a little bit. We can't out think those types of situations. We have to do something with these situations. And so this time right now, more than ever, I hope that we're realizing that you can't just eat right and expect yourself to be healthy and well. If your emotions aren't right, which by the way, your mind is pretty much always going to tell you that you're fine. And that's why we can go through grieving experiences, moments that we wish would have been different, better, or more. Hopes, dreams, expectations that aren't going to be met. We can keep throwing those types of grieving situations in our backpack called of life and just keep going through life, telling ourselves that we're fine, believing that we're fine, because we can still succeed in work. We can still succeed in school. We can succeed in relationships and parenting and you name it. But eventually it does all catch up with us. It shows up as cancer. It shows up as heart disease. It shows up as diabetes. It shows up as, you know, joint inflammation. It shows up as, you know, the little tighten, tightenings that we get and we need to go to the chiropractor. Your body's trying to get your attention all the time that your backpack of grief is full. But if we aren't doing anything with it, it leads to disease because our chemicals are jacked up for long, prolonged periods of time. Chronic illness, let's look at our grief history. Let's look at our grief health. Let's look at our emotional self. I've renamed it, by the way. The official method is called grief recovery method, but I've called it fart training. So feelings and recovery training. I mean, doesn't it feel so much better to say, I just need to fart today? We do, basically. We need to dig in there and find our unresolved feelings and emotions and release them in a way that's effective and healthy. I don't know. Sounds like a part to me. And it makes sense. Feelings and recovery training. I don't know. I feel like sometimes people will have a better time letting that float off their tongue than maybe grief recovery method. I don't care what you want to call it. It is about emotional health and intelligence, okay? It's about emotional wellness practices. I can't be well from eating healthy one time. I can't be fit by exercising one time. I can't practice, you know, call myself, um, you know, a fitness guru because I went to the gym one time or I did yoga one time. I can't be a yogi by practicing yoga once a year, okay? Grief recovery method is meant to be, or fart training, whatever you want to call it, is meant to be a daily practice of some kind. Maybe you don't take 40 minutes to write some things out, but the way you speak and communicate is all affected and all changed, all adjusted. 
because of this. I'm curious what kind of questions we have or what are some experiences you've had since coronavirus or after? What are you guys noticing that you're using in your lives? Um, like I said, I, I personally did some writing today. Lunch and live. Got to eat lunch. Um, I personally did some writing today. Um, I've been a grief recovery, so grief is the feelings that bubble up, like we said, because of moments that we wish would have gone different or better or more. Now, let's just say, let's say different. Let's say we are in a relationship and the person turns out to be just a narcissist, just like impossible, and you get out of that relationship and you're like, thank goodness, I'm glad to be free of this person. You didn't enter into that relationship in that state, right? You experienced a change. You experienced, I think I just spit food. Classy. We'll find it later. Excuse me. So, that is really distressing. I have no idea where that's going. <laughs> well, there's that. So, hi, Jackie. Thanks for joining. So, let's say that we were in this relationship. And um, the person, you know, we enter into this relationship, it's exciting, it's loving, we, we feel accepted and wanted and all of those things. And then it turns out at some point, you start noticing little changes or little behavior things that aren't good or serving you well, or you start noticing different things. Maybe a few years pass and eventually you break free from this relationship. There was a change though, from the day it started to the day it ended. That change produces feelings inside of you, and that change is called grief. That doesn't go away simply because you're free of the relationship. There was a lot of loss in there. There was a loss of what was familiar to you in the beginning. There was a loss from um, what felt safe in the beginning. It didn't start off feeling unsafe, right? It became unsafe. It changed into being unsafe. So a lot of times people will say, I don't have any grief. I'm glad to be out of that relationship. I don't have any grief. I'm you do have feelings bubble up because of that change. Whenever that started to happen for you, there are feelings bubble up. So then what I can do is teach you how to go back and find what those feelings were, what bubbled up for you in that time when it was really started to become aware to you and, and show you how to kind of clean that up and set that down in a way that will help you go forward more free with less baggage in your emotional backpack. Um, because as long as you hang on to that loss of safety or that loss of trust or that loss of um, acceptance or that loss of love, as long as you hang on to it when it happened way back then, that's affecting every other relationship you have going forward. So loss of safety, loss of hope, loss of trust, loss of love, you're going forward with a little bit less trust available for your next relationship or a little bit less space for acceptance in the next relationship. You're gonna fight harder sometimes and overperform or maybe underperform because you don't believe that it's gonna last anyway. So grief recovery method is just life training to give you freedom to go forward into your different relationships um, with, more, with more presence. Um, I fight really hard for this because it's important to me and I see the effects of people. So what are some things we do when we have all this grief building up. Well, um, right now I see a lot of alcohol posts happening because we're all experiencing a change with this grief or this coronavirus, right? Um, our daily routines are different. Our daily, maybe our income, our expectations, our relationships are challenged right now when they're separated, right? So I'm seeing a lot of alcohol posts, um, a lot of what else? A lot of eating posts. This isn't necessarily coronavirus. This is just because I didn't plan well and I needed some food. Um, that's why we have snacks in our life, right? For the moments that we didn't eat well. I could have grabbed a perfectly beautiful banana or apple there, but I didn't. It's way too messy. I'd rather spit crackers out of my mouth that have already been chewed. A banana, yeah. All right. What questions or thoughts? Where are we? Many times there are buried feelings you don't even realize are there. Yeah, actually, that's such a good point, Cheryl. So um, this grief recovery method, right? 
sometimes we come in, well, usually, almost always, we come into grief recovery method because we're, we're sure of a specific loss or two. I came into the method because uh, my father completed suicide. So I knew that was a big loss and I was really sad. I was, um, I was like fighting with myself on, he didn't love you, you know, all those things. But then also, um, I didn't, I felt like I had failed him too, because I was part of the suicide awareness team when I was in the air force. So I felt like I'd failed. So, um, it was my fault that he was dead. I mean, that was a huge, enormous weight on my heart. And um, I'm thinking, how much weight can I bear before I'm taking my life too? So the, that loss I'm aware of led me to grief recovery method. I'd also been um, sexually abused in my life um, way back, started the summer before sixth grade. That lasted for a couple of years. So I was aware of a couple of big losses. But what I didn't know, what I learned, what I gained permission to feel and acknowledge in my first class was, goodness sakes, I had a lot of grief. I had a lot of emotions built up because I had a lot of change in my life. I moved a lot. I had pets come and go, come and go, come and go. So I was losing friendship, comfort, safety, familiarity, control of my body, um, personal space, you know, my innocence by the abuse. Um, I lost uh, my ability to trust myself. I lost my voice. My biggest, my biggest actually sadness and regret with, um, with my abuse is that I, it, I let it take my voice away. It was gone. I, I never spoke up for myself really again until um, maybe I was 30, I think. My husband and I started going through a hard time, started arguing, and I remember thinking, good for you, Rochelle. You're getting your voice back. And so I argued louder and bigger many years later. That was still affecting me. Um, so it, it had taken my voice for all my whole life. Um, emotional eating, we're seeing some emotional eating. Many times our feelings, oh, right. And so the feelings varied. That would be an example of, I didn't know my, it was my voice that had been given away. I had to like lift up a bunch of weight in my class. So anyway, I have done some pieces of grief recovery work because I knew it was a big loss. Some I have just done out of pure obedience to, you know what? I don't know. I'm just going to complete all these different relationships. I made a list of names. I'm just going to complete them all just so I can be certain that I'm not carrying something. And sometimes those ones that I just was like, this is dumb, I don't need to do this. I would do it just out of pure obedience and I would realize, holy cow, that was, I didn't even know all that was in there. I didn't even know I had that energy in there. So I, I really just incorporated it into my life to be pure obedience. Has anyone else incorporate or had that type of experience where they just did one out of obedience, did a completion out of obedience. We don't, we don't use the term closure, by the way. It is a wrong, mythical term. Closure doesn't exist. Nobody can capture all your painful memories and lock them in a box where you never see them again. No, 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 no. That's a myth. That's a, that's a popular song by Beyonce. To the left, to the left, everything we own in the box to the left. That doesn't actually work emotionally. What I can do, though, is help you um, um, find where the pain hot spots are and heal those so that you can sit and look at the situation. You can remember it. You can recall your memories. They're still present. They just won't be so bitter and painful because they've been healed, right? So a, a broken arm hurts a lot more in that moment than just remembering it later after it's already been fully healed. You know, time's gone by. You've taken the proper proper actions to heal it. When you think about that broken bone, you can almost feel it, and it does hurt. But it hurts differently. It doesn't. It doesn't really hurt. It's just like, ooh, I didn't like that. And then it leaves your mind, right? You don't say, oh, it's hurting, it's hurting, because you healed it. You see how it sh it shifts. It, it's just, woo, I remember that. That was, oh, that was awful. I did not like that one bit. Oh my gosh, I was terrified. And then you could talk about what we're about to have for dinner because that pain, that wound was properly healed. Your emotional wounds are the same. What do we have over here? Um, it's home truth. It takes discipline to freaking sit with it, <laughs> doesn't it? A personal discipline. Half the time, I don't even realize until Rochelle calls me out. Oh, does that happen? Hmm. Does Rochelle call you out sometimes, Wes? That's my husband speaking over here. Um, or typing, texting. I'm trying to combine the words until Rochelle calls me out. You know, that's the thing. I'm hard to be friends with, probably. I don't know. Who are my friends over here? Um, 
is it hard to be friends with me? <laughs> uh, I think probably my husband, though, does have the hardest road. Because also, let's not forget, Wes, my husband over here, is also a specialist. So I have very little tolerance for specialists who don't use their own tools. Please don't preach to the masses if you aren't using the tools. I don't know why. I just feel like that's hypocritical and not okay. So I have a very short, I know that we're all grievers, though. It, it does depend on the situation. But if I see specialists who are judgmental and rude and cutting people down and not honest and, you know, betraying others and not living up to their word, I will call them out in a gentle, loving way. Wes probably gets the least of the gentleness, to be honest. But you are the epitome of pure obedience. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to mess this, I don't want to mess this life up. I don't want to miss moments because I'm too busy focused on something that was in the way and I didn't even know it was in the way, you know? It's kind of like, you know, you can't see the forest through the trees. So, you know, if you're, if I was in a big dense forest and I'm standing and there's a big, big wide tree right in front of me, I kind of don't even have an idea. I really don't have an idea. I might know that there are some other trees, but I don't know how many until I start digging in and moving some of them out of my way, right? And grief is very much like that. I can't see it all until I just start doing it. And that's, um, that's why I just make it happen. What's the point? I don't want to be affected and weighed down. I don't want to treat people like crap if, I, if they don't deserve to be treated like crap. Not that anyone deserves to be treated like crap, you know, but, but I don't want it to be because um, I just have something old that really doesn't even belong to that person. I want to heal it. I want to be the most healthy version of me and go out of this, this world like knowing that I kicked ass, basically, and, and worked my butt off. Anybody else want to join me on that? Uh, you're lucky to have that accountability partner. I don't know, Wes, do you feel lucky? Do you feel lucky? <laughs> Let's see what he says. No pain, no gain, folks. Of course, I'm putting him on the spot, so we'll see. No pain, no gain, Wes says. Yep, there's some serious pain, right? So you feel lucky to, that I help you get gains? <laughs> Um, I need to be the example and shift the focus to the be to be the one to call me out. That's what I'm saying. I actually want that. I want someone who'll say, "Whoa, what's going on? What's brewing up for you?" Okay, what's that mean? You have any ideas where that came from? What are you gonna do with it? I do want someone who will hold me accountable. I don't want to go through this this life thinking I know everything, even about myself, because. You know who I can hide from the best? Myself. So we actually need people in our lives who have been through the grief recovery method as well so they can be really helpful to us. It's not even, it's not bad to have someone who's willing to be helpful. Oh, crumbs. Dropped a whole cracker. Darn it. Oh, let's see. I'm your friend for sure. Nice. Awesome. I love you guys. Oh, tolerance, yo. <laughs> Cute. The wrath, <laughs> the wrath of Rochelle is a scary force. It's probably, it's really true. The sharpest tool in my tool bag is any guesses? It's my tongue. That's the sharpest tool I have. I don't have to bring it out very often, but goodness, it can come out. My my alter ego name is Ronell. That's my like get crap done name Ronell. <sighs> nobody wants Ronell. i don't even want her she's kind of scary you don't want the evil queen version trust me i prefer the savior one we watch uh once upon a time is that it on netflix so that's kind of been our i'm getting my cracker y'all i can't just leave it down here driving me insane it was on the shelf. Even if it's on the floor, though, I'm going to eat it. It's my own home. So let's see. Wes, I'm curious if there would be many circumstances. There probably used to be a lot more, Cheryl, but let's see what Wes has to say. What does he say? It's Friday. I hope so. Friday, you hope so about what? Ronell? The evil queen? There's some curious if there would be many circumstances. Too funny. Yikes, for sure. Bear pop. Oh, Chris, hi. Thank you. So. <sighs> That was a lot of information so far. How are we? Where are we? 
Um, are we understanding it's clear? By the way, I added the link. I took the link off of my um, Instagram for my website and let it just be a quick enrollment sheet because maybe you just want to read through that and see what it's about. Uh, you can always contact me at griefrecoverywithrochelle.com or even the griefrecoverymethod.com and find me or another specialist there. It doesn't matter. Just find a specialist. Just do the work. Help your heart. Don't fool yourselves into thinking you're perfectly fine while you're sitting there mindlessly eating snacks so you don't feel the pain in your heart. Mindlessly drinking alcohol so you don't feel the pain in your heart. I don't care if you eat snacks. I don't care if you drink alcohol. I don't care if you smoke marijuana. I don't care if you have mindless sex. I don't care what you're doing. What I do care, though, is what you're numbing with those things. If you're just doing it because it's fun, that's one thing. But if you're doing it because you know you can't tolerate the feelings and emotions bubbling up in your life, we got to work on that. Do you know how many people I've helped uh, relieve their, their problems with uh, prescription pills, with uh, prescription medications, with um, recreational drugs, with alcohol, but with pornography, with sex addiction? Do you know how many people I've been able to help through this stuff? simply because we get to the root cause of why we were engaging in those things in the first place. And if you really want to change your life, you really want to change what's going on and how you're, how you're um, attaching to different substances or, or activities in your life. I don't even care if you go to the gym. If you're going to the gym and you know you're beating yourself up because there's a buildup of emotional stuff in there and you're just trying to numb it and set it down, what are you going to do when your joints give out? What are you going to do when the gym closes? What are you going to do? Like, come on, you guys. We've got to get this stuff out for real, for good. And it's really simple to do once you learn how. Just have to commit to that. So griefrecoverymethod.com, any specialist. Grief Recovery with Rochelle is me, but there's also a link to find other specialists there. Um, the uh, form to enroll is on the bio of my Instagram site. Go enroll. Let's get going. I teach online. I've been teaching online for a couple of years since it came out uh, for a couple of years. Grief Recovery Method itself has been around for over 40 years. It's on every continent except for Antarctica. It's the only method on planet Earth that has been proven to be effective by scientific methods. So you can go research that on griefrecoverymethod.com. There's a tab at the top called Evidence-Based. It's, um, it's not a joke. It's been proven to be effective by science. Go read some of the reviews. Um, find yourself a specialist. Let's get going here. We don't need to be carrying this anymore and adding to the inflammation in our body when we're all trying to fight or avoid this virus. We've got to work on this. Hey, by the way, how many people are living with some kind of fear or worry because of this virus? Let's work on that. Let's settle all the energy that's connected to that, all the chemicals, those um, um, inflammatory chemical markers that are going off because of just the virus alone. We all have that. Every change in your life right now as a result of this virus is producing some undesirable chemicals in your body that lead to inflammation, which makes us more susceptible to coronavirus. Do we get this? This is big. I'm not messing around. This is big stuff. Um, let's say, yes, there are times for sure when I know something is going on. The fuse is shorter and I've missed the opportunity to explore her heart. I can be more proactive for sure in this area. I know better. <laughs> there are times for sure when I know something's going on, the fuse is shorter. And I, so, yeah, I do. I notice that too. I just, I, I can't take the buildup of nonsense when, I, when I'm grieving too. The fuse is shorter. Um, and I've missed the opportunity to explore her heart. I can be proactive for sure. Yeah, we do. We have to be willing. So how many people are you seeing on social media? Your friends, you're following them and you're like, hmm, or I've had someone contact me recently who was telling me sharing a story with me about a total stranger they've just come across each other on social media and this person being grief aware who i've worked with was like i don't know something i dreamt about this person and i just didn't feel right about it and then the next day i saw something on social media from this person and so i just reached out they're total strangers they've never met each other but because this person that i've worked with is grief aware reached out to a total stranger and the total stranger has a boatload of things going on. So, but just, just how willing are you to see something going on with another person and just say, I can be totally wrong, but I feel like something might be bothering you. Who's doing that? And why not? Are you afraid? 
Are you afraid of what they'll say? Are you afraid? Oh, no, it's too uncomfortable. No, I can't. No, whatever. Why are we doing that? Why are we afraid? Why are we afraid to acknowledge feelings? Why are we not paying better attention? Because we haven't le learned how, probably. So that's what we're going to do in a grief recovery class is help you in knowing how. And one of those ways is when you are seeing people with something going on or you have a dream about someone, that's because there's something unresolved there. There's something we need to pay attention to about that. Maybe it's connected to that person. Maybe it's connected to another. I'll show you how to sort through it. But um, so when you have an awareness of some kind that something might not be okay with another person, don't ask them, are they okay? You're forcing them to say yes. Don't ask them, is there anything going on? You're giving them space to say no. We need to be direct and we need to be focused and we need to be bold. We need to be willing to step out of the mold. We need to be willing to be unaccepted and kind of like judged a little bit. Would you rather be judged for caring and being and being wrong or just not caring at all? I'd rather be judged, uh, you know, judged for caring and being wrong than not caring at all. And it, it does hurt sometimes, by the way. That's not without, but a way to do that is you see something, you feel something, you dream about something, call that person. Hey, I could be totally wrong, but I feel like something might be hurting you or something might be bothering you or something might be on your mind. Give them the space to say, well, this is what it is. Don't ask yes or no, yes or no questions, okay? And I go forward humbly like that because especially with a with a a stranger, you know, it's difficult to say, tell me everything going on in your life. They're not probably going to respond that too well. So just something simple like I could be totally wrong, but I feel like there's something bothering you. Or if they're posting something, you know, somebody's died, first of all, a little social media etiquette here. If you know someone who is posting something difficult or whatever, or, or let's say uh you know, like widows or people who have had deaths or sad moments, you know, give them a, a thumbs up or, or at least a sad face or a something. Acknowledge their post because we are so busy ignoring people's posts because we don't totally agree with what they're saying. And you know what we're doing? We're turning our, our back on them. It's better to at least let them feel seen, whether you agree or not. It is better for the human to let them know that they're seen by somebody. If you have something you like to say about that, maybe you say it gently in a private conversation. I DM people all the time. But let's stop ignoring people because of we don't agree. At least acknowledge that they exist, especially if they're important to you, you know. All right, what do we have going on here? Dra -la -la -la. What do we see? Sure, sure, sure. I know something's going on. Um, you're acknowledging it. Way to go, friend. Yeah, good job, Jones. Woohoo! Drawing out equals asking questions and being that all-star heart with ears. Heart with ears. Do we know what heart with ears means? It means you have two ears to listen and a heart to care. Did I mention a mouth? Did I mention speaking? No, I didn't. No speaking. We have two ears to hear and a heart to care. We have a heart to hear the emotion. Okay, they're telling you a story. You have to use your heart to decide they feel hurt unloved, unwanted, unaccepted, judged, embarrassed. You have to use your heart to say, okay, I think I'm hearing judgment in that. Did you feel unwanted? Did you feel judged? Ask a question to confirm. That's what use listening with your heart means. It means listening and then trying to understand which emotion the story is trying to tell you about. And then ask them simply, are you feeling unsafe oh yeah okay i can see that don't give your opinion i never said use your head i never said use your brain throw that thing in the trash it is not going to work all you have to remember is to listen let it pierce your heart what feeling do you have and repeat that feeling out with a question mark at the end of it and then let them talk some more go back to listening okay that is the way to listen you've got to learn how to listen or you're constantly breaking safety with people so good job Wes. be a all-star heart with ears all stars. Oh my gosh, that's a, that's another good shirt. Let me write that down. All stars. Because, well, I played softball, and in softball, it was a big deal in little league, especially. We didn't have it in the older years, but 
It was a big deal in Little League to make it to All Stars. That was huge. We need an All Stars brief recovery with shirt, heart with ears. Yes, yes, good job. This brings awareness. Maybe when the griever is unsure what is happening inside. Yeah, that's so true. So we don't always know that we have a full-on grief episode going on. We don't always know that there's a whole bunch of emotion going on. So having a heart with ears, having someone who can hear you with their heart and their emotions engaged gives them the opportunity to say, yeah, actually, I was really hurt. Yeah, actually, I did have, I didn't even realize I had that going on. It gives them space to help explore themselves. You know, we'd love to be experts, but not a single one of us is an expert floating this earth. And especially about ourselves, our mind can trick us and deceive us. No, we're fine. We're used to going through life with so much stuff on top of us that we don't even realize that we have grief all the time, most of the time. So having a heart with ears trained somewhere nearby is really helpful. I, I couldn't, I couldn't think of a better friend a better connection, a better relationship than someone who has hearts, a heart with two ears pointed in my direction. Maybe you could become that person for yourself and for your friends, mostly for your friends, because if you do it to them, they notice there's something so different about you. They're inspired and encouraged to do it for you. Isn't that interesting? But you always get personal benefits. A trusted heart with ears is a big reward, huge to have as a title, huge. How about all-star level though? Dang, that's good. Ooh, oh, I'm getting an idea. Well, it's written down, so that's good. Fear of opening a can of worms, I think. Yeah, sometimes people are just afraid of what they're gonna hear, so they'd rather run from it because they don't know what to do with it. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to respond. They don't, so they just run. They just walk away or change the subject or talk about their own thing, switch the story. You ever have those people who you say something like, oh my gosh, me, and then they start talking about themselves? Does anybody ever have that? I can't stand it. I have a couple people in my life, really mostly just one, and I just want to avoid every ounce of time with that person because it's so much work, so much work. Um, I'm human. I am human, so I do my grief work so that I'm willing to get back into the relationship or I won't do it. But, you know, those people who you talk to them and they just totally ignore what you said about yourself and start talking about themselves and their example or their story. Like, that's really great, but you didn't even acknowledge that I spoke. So annoying, right? A badge of honor. I agree. What do I say next? Mm, after what? What do you say next after what? The attitude of ain't nobody got time for that. Too much of a hurry. Woo! You hit the nail on the head right there. Ain't nobody got time for that. We all know what that is, right? I don't know. YouTube, it ain't nobody got time for that. I got pneumonia. No, I got bronchitis. That's what it was. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, yeah, that was so good. Um, so that's an old YouTube something or other. I don't know what it is. But ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, we're in a hurry. Woo, I don't want to open that kind of worms. They got, they, there's too much going on there. I don't even know what, I don't want to mess with that. They need to get some therapy. They need to do something. Isn't that the attitude that people have these days? Well, guess what? Most of us have time right now, don't we? This is coronavirus quarantine time. We got time. All we have is time, a lot of us. So let's make it effective for ourselves and for other people. We need to be reassuring that they matter and time can be made for them. Yeah, totally. Totally. We do. People need to know that they matter. Um, and how do we show people that they matter? Yes, there's the five love languages. Yes, that is a way to show people that they matter. But guess what? Everybody could benefit by a heart with ears. That's truly the only love language you need. That's it. Because you can be a physical touch person all day long. But if nobody ever stimulated your heart by listening, and seeing you as a valuable human versus a tool to have sex with, guess what? You're in trouble. Physical touch, maybe rubbing feet, but eventually you've got to be able to touch hearts or there's not a relationship. If you're a gifts person, you can receive gifts all day long, but guess how many divorces end with the richest people alive who have everything they ever wanted? Guess what? If you are a words person, I could talk to you all day long, but if it's never followed through with a reaction, an action, a connecting motion called heart with ears, 
it's not going to work. How about, or if you don't feel heard or you don't feel wanted, you don't feel accepted, you don't feel loved. I don't care what your five love languages is. You still require a heart with ears, by the way. If you're familiar with the five love languages, heart with ears, always needed, hands down, every single time. Yes, this builds trust and safety every time. And then imagine how much more effective your love language is when you know you have trust and safety with your connection, with your relationship. I don't care if it's a friendship, a workship, a romantic ship. I don't care. I really don't. I don't care if you're male, female, male, male, female, female, all the things, all the combinations. I don't care. You still need a heart with ears. I don't care who you are. It's just a human requirement. Listening shows you care, folks. Amen all day long. I need to write that down. Is that a song? I have to write some of these things down. Listening shows you care. Totally. I'm thinking, reach out. Reach out and touch someone. Reach out. Okay, what is that? National Lampoon's European Vacation. I think it's that. She's sad. She's crying because she's missing Jack, I think. It's a big eye opener. Yes. Well, dear, thanks for sharing. Okay. All right, everybody. Better it up. Yep. It's always return time. So, Michelle. Yep. Okay. So, everybody, thank you. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for your heart, your time, your questions, your interest, your learning, all of the bits and pieces. You can enroll on my bio on Instagram email me. I can also send you the enrollment steps that way. Go to griefrecoverymethod.com. Find a different specialist if you don't want this one. It doesn't hurt my feelings. Just go out there in the world. Better yourself. Better yourself. Grow yourself, but for others too. It's powerful, and we need this to grow in the world. By the way, remember I told you this is the only method in the world there are some other things that are going to work, but they can't be guaranteed because they haven't been proven to be effective by science. So you can gamble, you can play around, dance around, do what you're going to do. But I hope that eventually grief recovery method will land in your radar because it doesn't mess around. If you feel more safe to call it farting, do that. Okay. So everybody, I love you. Thanks for joining. I'll see you Tuesday, lunch and live 1145 both Tuesday and Friday. If you like these messages, they eventually go up on YouTube Monday. If you're in my email bit, uh, you get them sooner than everyone else. Please share them with your friends, your family. Like and subscribe to that, subscribe to that YouTube channel. I really appreciate it. It helps spread the word, spread the good news, the true news to other people so that they can find it easier too, okay? I love you all. Yeah, yeah, Wes, like, ha, ah, fart. Yeah, feelings and recovery training. It works, right? It totally works. So if you want to be fart trained, you let me know. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye.